Hi, I'm Dr. David Bernstein. I'm the director of the Advanced Wellness Center in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I'm a doctor of chiropractic and a certified clinical nutritionist. And thanks for tuning in to my series on inflammation. If you haven't watched part one yet, I suggest that you view that first because it provides the groundwork for this video. In this video, which is titled Inflammation Part 2, the 1-2 Knockout Punch, I'm going to share with you the two most important and easiest factors you can address to knock out inflammation from your body. I call them the 1-2 Knockout Punch and I'm referring to nutrition and lifestyle. When your body chemistry and your lifestyle are both well balanced, you will see a dramatic improvement in your overall health. Remember that inflammation is the common link to all the major diseases that plague our society today. I'm, I'm talking about heart disease, stroke, cancer, diabetes, and many more. So let's get right down to it. Let's take a look at nutrition. The food that you eat is the fuel that your body runs on. I'm sure we all agree that if you put good quality gasoline into your tank, your car will run much better than if you use poor quality gasoline. Certain foods increase inflammation and others reduce it. There's no such thing as a neutral food. There's no demilitarized zone when it comes to food. So let's take a look at the most inflammatory foods in the average consumer's diet. Number one is sugar. That includes cookies, candy, soda, cake, and high fructose corn syrup, which is found in so many foods today. Sugar causes the pancreas to secrete insulin, and insulin causes lots of inflammation to spread throughout the body, leading to plaque buildup, diabetes, and cardiovascular problems. Even natural sugars like fruit need to be minimized because they will still cause insulin to be secreted. And especially avoid fruit juice because the sugar, go sugar goes directly into the bloodstream and will cause an even greater release of insulin. Number two is gluten. Gluten is a protein that is found in various grains like wheat, rye, oats, barley, spelt, and kamut. When you eat foods that contain gluten, if you recall from our previous video, you'll get a release of zonulin, which then activates NF-kappa B, and it causes major inflammation to spread throughout the body. Gluten is a hidden ingredient in a lot of products, so I highly recommend that you go to our website, which is awellness.com, and check out one of our blogs titled The Hidden Sources of Gluten. Number three, omega-6 fats. These include many of the polyunsaturated vegetable oils that are commonly used, such as safflower oil, soy oil, sunflower oil, and corn oil. Also avoid canola oil and peanut oil. For years, we were told that the polyunsaturated oils are good for your heart. Well, that was dead wrong. These oils can cause tremendous inflammation. And the worst of the oils are the trans fats. These are the fats that have hydrogen added to them. Number four is food additives. These are the substances that are added to foods in order to enhance their flavor and their aroma and their texture. They also improve their appearance and they retard food spoilage. The worst food additives are a group called excitotoxins. These actually overstimulate the brain cells to the point where it destroys them and it can lead to stroke, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and brain cancer. Some of the common excitotoxins include MSG, otherwise known as monosodium glutamate. It's a very common flavor enhancer. Another excitotoxin is carrageenan, which is a thickening agent. It's found even in lots of so-called healthy and natural foods. And there's aspartame, which is a sweetener. It's found almost everywhere. In fact, all the artificial sweeteners cause inflammation. And for a more complete list of excitotoxins, I refer you to Russell Blaylock's groundbreaking book titled, Excitotoxins, the Taste That Kills. Number five, dairy products. Includes milk, cheese, butter, yogurt, and ice cream. We are the only animals on the face of the earth that consume milk beyond the infant stage. And ironically, we get it from an animal with much different nutritional requirements than us. Cow's milk is made for a baby calf, which weighs about 100 pounds at birth, and it's designed to enable a cow to reach its full growth potential of about 1,500 pounds. Our size is about one-tenth that of a cow, and so our nutritional requirements are completely different. Plus, we don't produce the enzymes that are necessary to break down the sugar in milk, which is called lactose. And that's why lots of people get bloated and gassed when they have dairy products. It can cause considerable allergies, which then can lead to inflammation. Now, Let's talk about the foods that reduce inflammation. These are the good guys. 
And number one, I highly recommend vegetables, especially cruciferous vegetables. These include broccoli, cauliflower, kale, cabbage, and Brussels sprouts. A word of caution though, if you have a hypothyroid condition, otherwise known as an underactive thyroid, you should eat cruciferous vegetables sparingly because they can tend to slow down the activity of the thyroid gland even further. But if you cook these vegetables, the detrimental effects are greatly reduced. Number two, gluten-free grains. The healthier ones include millet, brown rice, quinoa, and amaranth. Some stores even carry gluten-free oats. Number three, animal protein, such as chicken, turkey, and eggs, they're all quite beneficial. However, try to get grass-fed whenever possible. The reason being that most animals are grain-fed with corn because it's a cheap grain. And even though corn does not contain gluten, it is high in omega-6 fats, and so it can cause inflammation. Grass is higher in omega-3 fats, which reduces inflammation. And if you can't get grass-fed, organic is the next best. Number four, oils. Fish oils are high in omega-3s, and as I mentioned, they are very effective in reducing inflammation. Wild salmon is an excellent choice. Avoid farm-raised fish because they don't have any omega-3s in them. And the other concern for fish is the mercury content. Generally speaking, the smaller the fish, the lower the mercury content. And that's why sardines and anchovies are good choices. Flounder and sole are also relatively low in mercury. I highly recommend coconut oil and olive oil because they have excellent anti-inflammatory qualities. Number five, fruits. The best fruits to keep inflammation down are the berries, such as blueberries, strawberries, blackberries, and raspberries. Berries have large amounts of antioxidants, so they help to reduce the free radical activity. Also, berries are lower in sugar, so they won't kick up your insulin and drive up the inflammation. Number six, spices and herbs. The most significant ones we found to date have been curry, ginger, turmeric, and its active ingredient called curcumin. That's why the incidence of Alzheimer's is much lower in India than it is in most Western nations because they consume these spices on a daily basis. Also, green tea is loaded with antioxidants and is important for reducing inflammation. Number seven, water. Two-thirds of your body is water, so it's vitally important for so many chemical reactions to occur in the body. And just like a car needs adequate water in its radiator to keep the engine from overheating, we need adequate water to keep us from overheating. And regarding nutritional supplements, some of the most important ones are the omega-3 fish oils, vitamin C, vitamin D3, selenium, zinc, magnesium, and all the other antioxidants. Also, fiber and flora, which is the good bacteria found in the bowel, these are also very important. As far as lifestyle goes, you need to balance your life. You need to keep everything in balance. When you tip the scales too far in any one direction, stress can add up and cause high levels of cortisol, which results then in inflammation. So you need to balance your work, your play, and your rest time. People are just too busy today. They never seem to get things done, and so it causes even more stress. And just as we need to budget our money, we also need to budget our time. Set aside specific times to get things done and use realistic time frames to accomplish these things. Moderate cardiovascular exercise on a regular basis is great for reducing stress and for reducing fat. It's the fat that hangs around the abdomen and, and the intestinal tract that causes the greatest amount of inflammation. Obesity is a high risk for disease. It's a high risk factor. And reducing the sugars and grains helps reduce obesity. So if you have a health challenge and you'd like more information about our services at the Advanced Wellness Center, please contact us at 954-565-4440 or go to our website awellness.com. Thanks for tuning in. This is Dr. Bernstein and stay cool.